duckies, Andy Lippy here, back with another streamer bot video, and today we're going to be looking at the time and date, so we can create a widget inside of OBS to display what time it is where you are and the current date. You can use just the time on its own, you can use the date on its own, it's completely up to you how you want to use this, I'm going to teach you how to get it working and how to format it, right? Without further ado, let's get on with it, put your rock over the stone, let's go. This portion of the video is sponsored by Owned.Pro. Owned.Pro have got absolutely everything for your stream. They've got hundreds of overlays and alert packages. And right now, they actually have partnered with Epidemic Sound, so you can get tons of loyalty-free music and sounds on your stream for a super, super cheap price. You can also save yourself 50% off your entire membership using offer code ANDY50PRO at checkout. I'll leave all the links in the description and they go a long way to supporting the channel, all right? So first things first, you want to make sure you've got all StreamerBot installed and up to date, ready to go. You can check out one of my videos on how to install it just up there if you need any help with that. All the links are in the description as well. Right, so I'm going to jump into OBS first so we can actually start creating the, the actual widget itself. So this is completely up to you what you do here this is going to be your design so it's lit like i say completely up to you i'm going to create a new source and we're just going to create a text source for now i'm going to keep it really basic you can obviously use some of my examples as inspiration to, on, on how you can make this so i'm going to call this time and date widget you can call it whatever you like i'm going to press ok you can obviously select whichever font you want. I'm just going to leave it as the basic, but make it a little bit smaller just so it's easy to read. And obviously, as we type into here, you can see in the example there, we can actually have some text. Really easy to do. So I'm just going to press OK. We can obviously change all the formatting of it. It's completely up to you what you do here. Then we can open up Streamerbot just here. So I'm going to jump, make sure I've got everything connected like OBS and everything. Again, go and check out my tutorial if you need help with that. Then we're going to go to actions and we're going to start creating an action. So we're going to right click, press add, and we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this time and date for now. And you can put it in a group to obviously organize it. It's completely up to you what you do there. Press OK and we can start adding some sub actions. So this is actually really easy to do. So we're going to right click and we're going to press add sub action and we're going to use C sharp for this. So then we're going to go to execute C sharp code. Select that and we can start doing some coding. Obviously this you will not need to know the ins and outs of all C sharp because all you need to do is copy exactly what this says. So after it says your main code goes here you can put a few line breaks in just like so and we can start typing in here. So we want to basically pull the date and time what it is right this second. The way that we do that is I'm going to press tab a few times to keep all my code in line. I'm going to type in date, time now because i'm just going to give it a name i'm just going to call it um i could call this for instance this is the variable name uh, i'm just going to call it now because it's only used inside of this c sharp code it's not used anywhere else in streamerbot so i'm going to put date time now equals and then i'm going to actually use the command date time dot now like that and use a semicolon at the end. Now we can go to a new line and we can press tab a few times to move the code across. And all we need to do now is send this information to Streamerbot so we can use it somewhere inside a Streamerbot. This is just to make it a little bit easier for you guys that don't know the ins and outs of C Sharp. So what we need to do is actually create the argument for Streamerbot to use. So there's actually a really useful website if we open up Chrome. Go over to the Streamerbot wiki. We can actually search in here for what we can use. So if we go to sub actions on the left hand side just here, press C sharp, we can actually see the available methods. This is basically everything that we can use in the C sharp code to tell Streamerbot what we want to do. So if we have a little look down on the left hand side, you'll be able to see like variables, global variables. So we are wanting to save a variable. So if we click variables, It'll go down. What we need to use is set argument. That is the, the name of the command. So pretty much not ignore the things that are in yellow. That just tells you what type of input it is. So set argument. And then we're going to be using a string. So that's just obviously normal text. Give it a name. And then in the next part, we're going to actually say, what are we going to save inside of that variable? So if we open up StreamerBot once more and 
in here we can start setting that argument so to do that we do cph uh, dot and the reason why it's cph is because streamerbot used to be called channel point handler so anytime you're using any of these c sharp methods you'd have to put in cph dot now we can do set argument argument as you can as we saw just above set argument and then we do open brackets and if you look we need to use a string so to do that we're going to put in some speech marks because that basically tells streamerbot that this is a string that we're using this is what we're going to call the variable so i'm going to use current date time so anytime i use the variable current date time within this action it will actually pull this information from here now we need to tell streamerbot what information we want to be put into that variable so i'm going to do a comma and we can type in here the now because we want to use that variable so if i type in now this is the variable just here and what we need to do because this variable isn't a string and we're going to be turning it into a string we need to make sure it's a string so to do that we do dot to string and make sure it's all capitalized exactly like that otherwise it won't work correctly and now anytime that we've done something like a two string we need to do some open brackets again because we're now gonna format this to how we want it so i know i want to use the date so i'm going to use uh this i'm going to use four d's and then i'm going to do comma double d and then do the month like so and we're also going to do year like that so now I've done that, you're probably thinking, all right, how did you know what to put there? And I'm going to show you that in just a second. So we're just going to close this off first. So we're going to close this off by doing another semicolon. And we can press compile. This is going to make sure everything is all compiled correctly. And you should see compiled successfully. If not, it will tell you what the problem is. You might have missed a semicolon or just make sure, pause the video, and it looks exactly like that. So I'm going to press save and compile. And that is it. It's there, ready to go. So you're probably thinking, yeah, but what are we going to do with this information? I can now start using this. I could put it in Twitch chat message if I wanted to. But I'm actually going to be using this as the OBS text source that we created. So if I create a sub action and go down to OBS, and I'm going to choose the set GDI text like so. And if you remember, we had the scene time and date, and we had the source time and date widget. So all I need to do is put in uh, some text if I want to, the current date is and then a, a colon just there and now we need to use that variable that we set so if i use the percent sign and type in current date time percent sign because that's how we reference a variable and i can press ok now i can set this up as a chat command for instance so if i go to commands inside of streamerbot then right click and add a command and i'll put exclamation mark date i could do with many different ones if i want to do exclamation mark time for instance as well and we're going to link this to the action time and date so we're going to select that and we can change all these settings so it works exactly how you want it to press ok so now when i jump inside of obs i can do exclamation mark time press enter and you'll see it's now changed this text source to the current date is thursday 30th june 2022 wicked right and we can have that automatically update so you're probably thinking, yeah, but what about the real life time and stuff like that as well? If we go back into Streamerbot, go back to our action, we can edit the time and date again. So if we go to execute code, we're going to change what this is. So we've got the, uh, the date just there, and we can now add the time as well. So again, the formatting is completely up to you because we're creating a string here. And I'm going to do a little dash, and I'll add H for hour. And we'll do a colon and minute minute. And we'll also do TT. And again, you're probably thinking, what does that even mean? And I'll show you this just after we've compiled it. So I press save and compile once again. And now when I go back into OBS and type in exclamation mark time, you'll see we've now got the current date, it, solid, solid there, Andy. And then we've also got the time that it currently is. And as you can see down at the bottom, that is the correct time. When you're now thinking, yeah, but I don't want to have to do this manually and update it, which that'd be silly because it's not the current time. You'd have to use a chat message every time. So the way that we do that is we do a timed action. So if we go now to settings, go to timed actions, 
right click and add. We can call this, we'll say time and date. And we can set this up for an interval. I usually do like every minute. Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted, you could do it every second. But you don't really need to do that because you only need it to change every minute. So if I do 60 seconds, that will then trigger this action. So we're going to select the action and go time and date and press OK. Now, every 60 seconds, this is automatically going to update. Just like so. That was the longest minute of my entire life. And that's pretty much it for that. So, like I was saying, you're probably thinking, but how did you know what, what you wanted to use for the, um, for the codes when you were doing, like, the D and everything like that? So, if I go into the time and date again, into the code, you'll remember I did all these little things like the D, 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 M, 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 and everything like that. So, the way that we do this, I'll leave this link down in the description, but this website just here will actually have everything here. So, you can see, if I just use D, it'll say the day of the month from 1 through 31 and it will give you an example day of the month from 0 1 to 31 so that will be formatted again differently basically we're just adjusting the format and we can use all these different ones you can do seconds if you wanted to uh, you can even do tenths of a second you, it's completely up to you what you do with this and these are all the different formats that you can have to make the date and time exactly the way that you want it on your stream so when it comes to editing it just go back into your code and just put in whatever string you want there with these little letters in the exact same format as we've done just there. And that's pretty much everything you need to know with the date and time. Obviously, there are a few other ways of doing this. You can actually set the text source directly from doing C Sharp. So let me know if you can work that out yourself just using the StreamerBot wiki. All the information's there. You can actually do it with just the one command using execute code. Crazy stuff. Want to say huge thanks to all these people here that helped me make this content full time for you. So please consider joining Patreon or YouTube channel members or just drop a tip. It goes a massive way to support in the channel. And then obviously, if you want some more streamer bot goodness, make sure you check out one of these videos just here. All right, put your rug for the stone. See you soon.